So on a uh, scale from one to 10, I was not really impressed with last night's game. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I mean, I feel like it's necessary to touch on this game, even though it has nothing to do with our division. It has nothing to do with the Philadelphia Eagles. These are two primetime teams. These are two prime teams where everybody expected to be at the top of the food chain and we have to play them. And they could, they could have been trouble for us in the, uh, in the postseason. Um, First, I want to I start off with the good, then I want to start with the bad from what I saw in the last night's game. From the good, I've seen that, you know, that bo both, te both teams have offensive capabilities. They have weapons. We all, we all know that these teams have weapons. And that's the thing that seems to excite a lot of football fans is these weapons and the way you should win. You should win the games by putting up all these highlights and having all these stats and this, that, and the other. But give me one game last year that the Eagles have uh, was in a shootout with. I can't think of no game last year during our Super Bowl winning season where we was in a shootout like that. You know what I mean? Where we had to go tit for tat, where it was, where it was we have to keep up with this offense or we're going to lose this game. That's not really winning football, in my opinion. That's not winning football, in my opinion. Um, as, far, as far as the Minnesota Vikings go, I knew the Minnesota Vikings were going to lose this game. I knew the Minnesota Vikings weren't going to be as good as everybody perceived them to be because nothing really changed for the Minnesota Vikings. The defense state... The defense stayed the same. The defense is pretty average. Um, in my opinion, the defense is very average. The defense is average. Um, let, let's, let, let's go down the timeline of why I come to the conclusion of why it's time to stop overrating the Minnesota Viking defense. They have not been the same since, since uh, Nick Foles exposed them. Nick Foles showed everybody how to beat these guys. There's often a weak linebacker guarding a wide receiver. Nick Foles did the exact same thing to the Minnesota Vikings that the Los Angeles Rams did last night. Nick Foles did that already. So everybody wants to pinpoint uh, McVay as being this genius of, of how to defeat the Minnesota Vikings. No, no. Ease up, ease up on giving McVay all this credit on how to destroy that defense. Maybe McVay watched game tape of how the Eagles did did it to that defense. All these dudes, all they do is watch tape. Of course, McVay ain't gonna wanna. Uh, of course, McVay wouldn't wouldn't admit to something like that. But you know, tape was watched on how Nick Foles did it. It looked very similar to me. I mean, in fact, wasn't the same wasn't the same amount of points put up? Wasn't the same amount of points put up? I believe we put up thirty eight. They put up thirty eight. Now, Jared Jer 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 Goff. For somebody to throw for almost 500 yards and, and throw under 30 passes, it's kind of remarkable. So he had a lot of explosive plays. But God, man, the Minnesota Vikings defensive coordinator, whoever that guy is, put that guy Barr in some really bad positions. And it, it, is just, it makes no sense to have Barr on Todd Gurley, who has running back, cap running back who has wide receiver capabilities at the running back position. And then on another play, you have him on a slot receiver in Cooper Cup who was one of the best slot receivers in the game, in my opinion. And then I don't even know how he got beat on the third one. He just was matched up with another wide receiver. I think it was, I, I want to say it was uh, Woods. I think Woods was on him the other time, or Cook, somebody. Somebody was on him the other time. That's just bad. It's just bad. It is bad. Instead of going out with there with that heavy set and having that linebacker out there, won't you switch to a lighter set and replace that linebacker with a, um, a cornerback or a safety who could run a little more? That just made no sense to me. That made no sense to me. Um, the, Minnesota, the Minnesota Vikings hung in for as long as they could. But you can't be successful winning these games thinking you're going to be in some type of shootout and made the best man win. That's how the, Saint, that's how the Saints have been uh, surviving on shootouts and made the best man win. It's not winning football. I didn't see any defensive presence from both sides of the ball, which leads me to believe that if a defensive-minded team like us throws a monkey wrench in their plan, they're not going to put up no 38 on us. We ain't going to be in no shootout with them. It's going to be a, a, a tougher and physical outing when you come to play the Philadelphia Eagles. So I wasn't impressed with Thursday night's performance from either team. I mean, I expected the Rams to do, with the, do what they did to the Vikings because the Vikings are who exactly who I know they are. Who I know they are. They just tied with Green Bay, a wounded Green Bay. They tied with Green Bay. Then they got, then they got exposed by Josh Allen, a rookie quarterback, and given Buffalo their first win. And then they go out there on, thir uh, then they go out here on Thursday night, and then they have... Jared Goff looking like Dan Marino Jr. Pathetic. Pathetic. So the, the, the Vikings, I wouldn't worry about the Vikings, but in all actuality, the Los Angeles Rams are a legitimate threat to anybody they play, to anybody they play, to anybody they play. But make no mistake about this. We seen this shiny new toy last year. Didn't McVay get coach of the year? 
Didn't Ty Gurley get Offensive Player of the Year? We know what these guys are capable of. So all they really did was add more pieces for Jared Goff to make Jared Goff look better. They're playing absolutely excellent football right now. But but the the the, the game the game the game was kind of designed for them to win. The game was designed for them to win. The, the Minnesota Vikings have been very poorly coached for a very long time, in my opinion. Even when they were good, they were poorly coached. Even when they were having a good record last year, they were poorly coached. Um, we could we, we could toot we could toot the Rams horn all we want. The Rams looked good last year too, but then took that first round exit to the Falcons because the Falcons had a better defense. The Falcons had a better defensive architecture that could offset some of those plays they were doing. Nobody's going to leave linebackers on Cooper Cup. Nobody's going to leave linebackers on Todd Gurley. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. There will be lighter sets in with, with smarter teams who know how to win. Nobody's going to play these guys like that except the Minnesota Vikings. So also, so although it did look uh, impressive on paper, but um, there wasn't there were, there wasn't any X's and O's behind that to should have that that could have offset it. How deadly that offense looked. All you needed is somebody who can think, and they would have offset at that. Now, one thing I will say about Sean McVay is um, the downfall of the the Rams, in my opinion, will be Sean McVay. It will be Sean McVay. Um, for the offense to be clicking like that and for you to only win by uh, eight points, it don't really sit well with me like that. That that should that it, sh it should have been a blowout for how your uh, your quarterback was playing. Sean McVay was doing stuff like. Trying to go for the juggler while the game was still close. I didn't really understand that with the fake punt and the, and the, and the punter throws a touchdown pass. I, it's just not winning football to me. I mean, no, nobody might have not expected it, but it's kind of it's, it's kind of it's kind of less showboat because I'm because I'm because we the new kids on the block. This you ain't gonna you ain't gonna win against us like that. I can't wait till we play the Rams. I, the Rams look good, and I'm up, we're up for the challenge. I can't wait till we play the Rams. I can't wait till we play the Rams. Now, as far as our safety position goes, um, we all heard the news about Rodney McLeod. He'll be out for the remainder of the year. This injury really hurt me because I like Rodney McLeod, but I'm sure Graham can step up to the challenge. I'm sure we can alternate other pieces back there, or is Earl Thomas an option worth looking at? I absolutely believe Earl Thomas is an option worth looking at. So it's, 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 it's something to think about. Um, I have another video going up later uh, later this afternoon. Um, I should have a special package in the mail from my uh, from my guy Ben at Alpha Grips. Um, we're gonna review this product and hopefully I can give one away or a few away to the subscribers and it'll just be super lit. So I'm very happy to be partnering with Alpha Grip uh, coming up soon, shortly in the next couple of videos. Um, I'll tell you guys all about the product when that hits. But um, let let me know what you let me let me know what you guys thought about that Thursday night game. Now I really don't watch too many Thursday night games if they don't pertain to us, but I believe this game directly pertained to us. You see how many times they brought up Carson Wentz's name. You see how many times we're being measured against against the Rams. This game was a this game was a game to watch for Philadelphia Eagles. It was a game to watch for Philadelphia Eagles. And my text messages and my notifications was blown up by haters basically saying that we can't beat the Rams. You know what my response to them was? We could beat you. <laughs> Lord Brunson back at you with the back at you. And I am the best reporter on the Eagles.